Uh, thank you very much for kind introduction. I'm Mark Cho, the Kyoto University. I'm very happy to talk about this topic, the photoacoustic imaging of tumor uh, vasculatures. And this is my CUI. And this is a very famous slide picture that published in 2001 by Professor Rakesh Jain and also by the Peter Carmeli. And they concluded that more than 70 of the major disease are actually due to the abnormalities in blood vessels. cells. For instance, retinal disease and the cancers, many cancers, including breast cancer, diabetes and the rheumatitis, the Alzheimer's disease and obviously uh, the, fr the, the fracture repair, etc., and um, etc. So that's the neovascularization, angiogenesis. The, this is a crucial, essential part of the many diseases actually. And this is another very famous slide, the left hand side, uh, the, by the Professor Judah Fulkman. He was actually a pioneer of the tumor angiogenesis. Um, the, clearly, the, and the solid tumor require neovascularization. This is an essential part for tumors to grow, maintain, or continue to grow. The right hand side is the looking at the microvessel density of the tumor tissues, in this case, the breast cancer tissues. And the large amount of the new vessels are produced generated by uh, cancer. So it's a, clearly we can see uh, the, the, the microvessel density in the tumor tissue increase in pre-malignant disease and obviously very clearly the in malignant, the invasive, the uh, virus, the uh, cancers. So the, this also clearly said that the angiogenesis of tumor, new angiogenesis is a crucial part for the growing tumors and also for important for the invasion and the metastasis. And largely to say it is important for tumor progression. This is another typical view of esophageal cancer. This is the fixed tumor um, esophageal the tissue materials. On the different right hand side, the looking at the normal vasculature, normal vasculature of normal epithelium of the esophagus. On the left hand side of this picture is actually the tumor, looking at the tumor vasculatures. Uh, oh yeah, I don't I understand that the tumor vasculature uh, look like the irregular, uh, elongated, the dilated, uh, the more dense, the et cetera, et cetera. A lot of the difference the phenotype is seen as compared with the normal vasculatures. This was published by Kumagad myself, the in Dancet Oncology 2002. This is another picture of esophageal cancer uh, using the microscopic, uh, the endoscopic microscopy actually. Uh, the, also, it's a, um, the, the vivid, it's a vital view of the tumor angiogenesis. Again, it's quite possible to identify the irregular shape, the uh, vasculature, the very fine you know, vascularization is possible to see and uh, the uh, dilation also, or the uh, quite the possible to identify. And this is another very nice view, or the uh, published around the ten years ago, on the Nature Reviews, uh, the um, the summarizing the characteristic of the tumor associated the uh, vascular system. It is leaky, the tortuous, heterogeneous irregular shape, the irregular branching, they are also shunts, the heterogeneous flow, and that means the prod drug delivery, which is the tightly associated with the therapeutic the resistance. So the, um, it's about the 13, 14 years ago, uh, we decided to develop the new, the imaging tool machine uh, named the photoacoustic imaging for or detecting the disease in human being, uh, clinical use. 
uh, conventional tools uh, currently used in clinics are somehow limited in terms of this detection size of the vasculatures. And the photoacoustic imaging, the PAI, is theoretically is possible to identify the uh, finer, more small veins and the arteries compared with the conventional tools. So that we decided to go for with the PAI to visualize the very fine, tiny uh, vessels. And the, with these, the new technologies, it is a hypothesis, but it would be possible to identify the vasculatures associated with, for instance, artery, arterial diseases, vasculitis or sclerosis, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, presumably, and autoimmune diseases, various variety of the venous diseases, and the, the reconstruction of the plastic surgery also it is important, and obviously cancers. And the hopefully uh, we hypothesize to identify the tech to the 200 micrometer the vasculatures with the photoacoustic imaging. And if we look at the publications of the PAI, the number is quite increasing uh, in recent days, particularly recent 10 or 15 years time. And 2020, we've got the over 800 new publication on the PAI at the PubMed site. This principle, this the original hypothesis was the proposed by the Dr. Alexander Graham Bell. He first reported the photoacoustic effect in 80, 1880. Surprisingly, uh, this was 18 years before X-ray when it discovered about rentogen. Dr. Bell showed that the sound generated through the thermal expansion resulting from light energy could be and detected with the, the his stethoscope form. So he named the device as the stethoscope form. This is called the photoacoustic the phenomenon of or the photoacoustic the effect. He laid this idea even before he invented the telephone. This is a very brief summary about the photoacoustic imaging in background, the principle. Actually, the PAI detects the ultrasonic waves, photoacoustic, the emitted by the thermal expansion of light absorbs. Here it has the potential to observe the deep inside the body with high resolution. Intrinsic, intrinsic light absorbers, such as the hemoglobin, can be used. It is necessary to develop the sensitive probe. This is a current the task for us, the, uh, the detect photoacoustic signals in order to visualize as a 3D view. Oxygen saturation, this is a good advantage for PAI. Oxygen saturation can be calculated by irradiating light with the wavelengths that match the to oxidize the and reduce the hemoglobin. And uh, this is a formula of the sound pressure at R is calculated like this side with the green nice and the parameter, the absorption coefficient and the light fluence. The wave equation, the formula also used in, in, in developing the system. Uh, this is a scheme of a photoacoustic tomography and the, in this system, a non-harmful laser beam is irradiated onto the tissue and the laser energy is absorbed by hemoglobin in the tissue. This leads to rapid and the instant thermal expansion and the, the hemoglobin release ultrasonic waves. The ultrasonic waves are captured at uh, multiple detectors outside the body this is just as we 
identify the epicenter of an earthquake, the, all of these signals uh, came from the hemoglobin. And repeating this, the procedure allows us to identify the 3D location of hemoglobin in vessels. The iridescent waves transmit through the body with less scattering uh, that promise the high resolution. Uh, this, uh, these machines that we developed in recent five years time, these machines actually, uh, and the, 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 um, the originally made, the, the diet and size, it's, we call the, uh, the wide field uh, machine, new machine. And just the showing the field size, wavelengths, uh, liquid selection depth, mode and the resolution. Right hand side one the, would be uh, the dynamic and the, the analysis is, that means the real time, the dynamic analysis is possible. And um, the resolution, the, uh, it's around the 200, the, the, the millimeter, the micro, or 200 micrometer. And a detection of photoacoustic signals by the hemispheric sensor, the, in order to reconstruct the 3D image of the learning vessels, the, it is necessary uh, to receive photoacoustic signals propagating the inverse directions. We made this analysis from various points, actually. Uh, the details are published uh, in this paper. Before the morphological analysis, we marked hundreds of the areas of the photoacoustic image that we thought it might be blood vessels. It, it, it's a knowledge base and based on the fundamental, it is actually fundamental knowledge and the computer, the smoothly merged them together to extract the blood vessels. Uh, we trace the vessels, for instance, here they, to show the these feature distributions. And uh, the, the, this technology was used for new machines. We have also improved it, the, that's the quality of oxygen saturation imaging. We need two wavelengths to visualize the oxygen saturations. And to calculate, the, we use the seven and the 56 wavelengths and also the 797, around 756. A nanometer, right? They are oxygen related, and the oxygen related, this one, hemoglobin, have different absorption. In contrast, around here, the 797, the, the, the is absorbed by both types of hemoglobin almost equally. So that the hemoglobin oxygen saturation is calculated, this formula. And the, these with the, the, these two the wavelengths, so the, we call this value as the S factor by irradiating the two wavelengths of the later so alternately. It's uh, alternately the, the, the irradiation uh, that is important. The, we eliminated the uh, positional shift, and it became possible to acquire the high resolution as the 200 micrometer. The each tissue of our body shows in a specific light, the absorption spectrum as shown in the left graph. By using the wavelength here about 800 nanometer, which matches the light absorption, the deoxygenated the hemoglobin and also oxygenated around these, the near in Flared, the wavelength, right, its absorption in water and the lipid is low. And the, uh, that is, uh, um, this is uh, uh, a wide field machine. The, the upper extremities or lower extremities are possible um, to examine measure. This is a typical example of the basket of the hand, hand basketers uh, visualized with this, the wide field machine. Using two wavelengths, as I mentioned, the laser alternatory, 
and, and the edge factor measurement was possible. We could visualize the hard pan, the arteries and the veins. The running accompanied with the arteries, they were the clarified, they visualized. So using the two wavelengths of the laser, alternatory and S factor measurements, so they could visualize the hand pan, so like this artery and the vein. And also they, we can identify like this, this is anatomical pictures of the, ha the hand, the uh, palm, the artery and the uh, veins. And the, it, it's running the in parallel, we can identify it. And also of the superficial of the palmar heart, the, um, the accompanying with the veins. And the, uh, this is then the view of A and V in, in palmar the vessels. And the some vessels are actually uh, the. Um, some vessels actually, the, um, the, we can identify in the MRA and, the, and also the possible to identify in PI and more vessels are possible to identify with PI, but some vessels, uh, the PI uh, did not detect. So pre presumably uh, the, because of uh, the anatomical position or relatively poor circulation of blood uh, for multiple reasons. But the, as an overall, this system is quite good to identify the palmar vessels, uh, arteries and veins, the fine vessels uh, quite clearly. Um, here also. All right, and the, this is a, a blast, the normal blast, the blast of the heresy of volunteers, uh, and the, um, the views actually, the, uh, the, the, it's actually the, um, the left hand side, the contrast, the enhance, the, the EMRI, and right hand side is the photoacoustic imaging we are, are able to uh, the, uh, see, uh, we can see the um, more fine vessels the, uh, compared with the MRI view. Um, it's a really uh, f the tiny fine vessels are possible to visualize with the PAI. And the color actually, color means the depth from the um, body surface. And the, back to the uh, palm arteries, uh, this is it's a not normal case. The, uh, this is an example of nodular arthritis. It's a nodule of arteries uh, were identified by PAI, but he didn't have any clinical symptoms. This is a disease case, the psoriasis. Uh, the before and after the treatment. After treatment, the oxygen concentration as factor uh, was improved. So that the, it's a clear evidence uh, the, that the, this system is able to use for monitoring of the disease. Another use application utility of the PI for uh, plus reconstruction plastic surgery and looking at, particularly looking at thoracodosal artery perforators, we know that the this vascular system is a quite very the, the between the each individual. So the many variations we have in this field. So that is it is necessary. It is needed to the examine, the visualize the these vessels for each individual when the uh, reconstruction, the surgery is made. So the, for this purpose, this PAI is quite useful. Another utility example, the um, actually Dr. Saito and his colleagues of the Kyoto University demonstrated why, why don't finger blood arteries kink during the joint flexion 
I mean, the, the dynamic observation is possible with this system. And these dynamic the views uh, of PAI show its details, the movement, the mechanisms using real time the dynamic the photodiagnostic imaging. Another beautiful view uh, was from the Keio University group, uh, the plastic surgery, uh, Professor Kishi and the and the uh, the Dr. Kajita, uh, the his colleagues. And the looking at the, the lymphatic system, lymphatic ducts using the fluorescence ICG in the cyanine green. It's a good matching of the fluorescence ICG and the photoacoustic imaging. Uh, now we can identify very, very fine the lymphatic vessels and lymphatic roots. And the, these views would be useful for diagnosis of lymphatic disease and also for the, the, the microsurgery and the anastomosis of the and lymphatic ducts and the veins, for instance. The back to the breast, the breast cancer series, the, this is MRI view. This is normal, the left hand the bottom is normal, the left hand upper is clearly the cancer, breast cancer cases in base with disease. We can identify the the vessels of the arteries, veins, the associated with this cancer by MRI. But the, if we look at the photoacoustic, the imaging view, when able to, the much, much more, I mean, the fine vessels, the tiny vessels, the in details of the uh, vessels. Are associated with the tumors, in this case, breast cancer. And the right hand side, upper right hand side, it's a marginal, or the a view with the, um, the contrast enhanced, the MRI, how it looks like. And the bottom is a conventional ways of imaging the ultrasound and the mammogram. The right hand side bottom is actually the pathological view, a section view of this tumor. Now we understand how the blood vessels are visualized of the breast um, cancers. This is a relatively large case, but also with the uh, small tumors, small breast cancers, early stage breast cancers are not possible to visualize with the PAI. And this is a 12 cases of invasive breast cancers, the, including the early diseases. So the, now we identify the very small, the tumor associated the uh, vessels. And then going to the oxygen saturation, the S factor series. This picture shows our oxygen saturation analysis of the healthy human breast. So the arteries are bent and demonstrated by color tones and the 100 means 100% 100 100 of, the, of uh, the oxygen saturation. These arteries are bent and are corresponding to the anatomic uh, findings. And the S factor series again, the, in order to verify the accuracy and the reproducibility of the S factor measurement by this uh, alternately elagiating, uh, as I said, the, this alternate method, 23 uh, adjacent, the artery venous S factor of this normal breast case when evaluated in this particular analysis. Uh, please look at the right, the upper, the table, and the graph, the, this shows the significant difference between the S factor values of the artery and the veins, and those absolute values were they considered reasonable results. And the, the, the lower, the two graphs, an example of S factor evaluation of the two sets of the adjacent, the vessels, these sets are shown as a yellow arrow in the upper photoacoustic and the figure. 
Although the S factor value can calculated on each point in the of the vessel, the fractionality and the, the range was very small. And the back to this case, actually, uh, the, it's a more magnified view here. That's the, uh, the common the photographic imaging. It's uh, the more magnified view. We understand the the more details about the tumor associated vasculature of the in human uh, and cancer case, the human breast cancer. And this is a very, very the impressive, the dramatic the view of the tumor associated vessels. And this, this picture, this is the S factor, the imaging. The yellow and the green colored vessels have low S factor, suggesting that they are veins. There are a few blood vessels show the high, the, the oxygen saturation resonance, the as artery, uh, and the, the, which would be associated with the lateral, phlatic, the artery. It, 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 it's a quite important artery for all uh, of rest. The addition to some, the hypoxic, the spotty lesions uh, are observed, which most likely represent the intratumoral uh, bleeding. So the further details of the oxygen saturation of tumor associated vessels, lead almost 100%, they are uh, connected to the, um, the lateral flotic artery I mentioned. The, although we are not certain, uh, some veins they tended to be have a little higher uh, the oxygen concentration compared with normal veins in the healthy people. And the, this may be, uh, we are uh, quite interesting about this phenomenon. This might be, uh, the, this might suggest that the existence of uh, the artery, artery venous, the shunt. This is well known that shunt is the often the induced in tumor uh, um, angiogenesis of tumor vasculatures. So something like this. And the, uh, this is a norm, uh, the vascular normalization theory proposed by Professor Akeshi and Haba. And vascular normalization would occur the, um, due to the therapeutic effect the, this theory has been proposed. The uh, the the Harvard group, as I mentioned, the, therefore we simply uh, decided to look at the changes of the tumor vascular using the uh, photoacoustic imaging. And this is the actual view of a case treated by neoadjuvant, the fully operative the March drug chemotherapy and showing the before and after uh, the treatment, the PAI abuse. So more numbers, actually more number of fine vessels uh, observed in the after the post-treatment the situation. And the, it was suggested that the intratumoral blood flow uh, would be increased after chemotherapy. That means the vascular normalization of the car happened and the PAM could also estimate oxygenation status, S factor status of these blood vessels. And the S factor status actually uh, seems to be also uh, somehow the normalized. We need more cases, but the, we could identify some uh, definite changes induced by neoadjuvant the chemotherapy. So the, the last two slides there, I'd like to the share um, uh, with you about the molecular imaging. This is under development. The, we are extremely interested in development. The photoacoustic molecular imaging actually the, provides, the, the, the photoacoustic imaging itself provides a high definition view of blood vessels without the um, any invasive the tools, but in this technology, in this the situation, we are able to use the new probes. So the, it, it should be the good matching uh, to, between the uh, PI and the molecular imaging. Um, and this is a good example. Um, the using in vivo heart to targeting the uh, the the tools antibody conjugated to iron 
oxide, the nanoparticle. Uh, this is one approach. And the multiple the publication now we have got. And the uh, another example, another application, another approach would be the go to nanoparticle uh, modified by complementary sequences itself so the assembled into the AU, uh, the aggregates, the uh, this published quite recently, uh, the covering the DNA signals, the photoacoustic signals. So this is a new wave of the imaging identification of the signal. Uh, the so, <coughs> uh, terano, uh, sorry, teranostic, the, this is another uh, quite a new important field. The, uh, the using the PFH coupled to the silica coated gold nanoparticle and presumably possible to use with the PAI. And another anti hertz approach also recently published. So the bottom one is the, um, the looking at so the AU, the uh, nanoparticle, gold nanoparticle, and also visualized the PAI just in the middle. So looking uh, very uh, interesting, exciting. Uh, the, uh, so it's uh, totally uh, um, the, uh, the promising way for or in the near future. And also the collaboration between the nanotechnologies and the fine imaging as PI would be crucial. So then we're happy to discuss about all the in the near future. And this is my, uh, the final slide acknowledgement supported by, this is quite supported by the Canon uh, Kyoto University project, CK project. It's um, um, more than 10 years ago, uh, they initiated the, uh, for many years time, the, these, the development are uh, supported by CK, then also supported by Japanese government, the named impact program. The PA was the Dr. Takayuki Yagi. Impact program was the initially developed by a uh, Japanese government cabinet office. And the Kyoto University of Western Radiation Diagnostics, the Plastic Surgery, and, and the Dermatology Department, and also Orthopedics as well. And the Kyoto University Plastic Surgery, Anatomy, Vascular Surgery, and Radiation Diagnosis. The Canon is a big supporter of this the research and the development studies. Hitachi also contributed to make the, uh, the machines, and the Japan probe also uh, uh, contributed to, to uh, generate the um, device, the detection device. Luxnas is currently involved in development of the new machines. And thank you very much. <laughs>